good morning. I am very pleased to be here. Uh, I want to talk mostly about, indeed, creationism, still crazy all the, after all these years, talk about some of the things that are going on today. But just as a quick schematic of what I'm going to talk about in terms of the history of this movement, creation science begat intelligent design, begat after a very important legal decision, Edwards versus Aguilard, two strains of anti-evolutionism. One strain was to promote the idea of teaching the evidence against evolution. The second strain was to promote the idea of teaching evolution and alternative theories to evolution. Now, I'm a scientist, there are a lot of scientists here. Just for the fun of it, how many scientists are here? Okay. Uh, afterwards, could you please bring up the list of evidence against evolution for me? <laughs> That's the reaction you get when you talk to scientists. What evidence against evolution? The big idea of biological evolution that living things shared common ancestors, we're not arguing about that. We argue about the details, we don't argue about common ancestry, about descent with modification. When you ask scientists, what about the alternative theories, you get the same sort of laughter or, or confused look. We don't know any alternative scientific theories to common ancestry. To the, uh, there's lots of, of debate about the process of evolution, the pattern that evolution has taken, but there aren't any alternative theories and there isn't a list of evidence against. If you go to the people who promote these ideas and you say, what are the alternative theories to evolution? Surprisingly enough, they seem to go back to what has traditionally been called intelligent design and creation science. Similarly, when you ask about the evidence against evolution, well, remarkably enough, we seem to be led back to those same arguments all over again. Now, I'm only going to very, very quickly go over creation science and intelligent design because most of you know a little bit about that anyway. If you don't, there's going to be a very good book sold after this uh, talk where you can learn a great deal more about these topics. Creation science is very largely the product of um, uh, Henry Morris and his followers who uh, built this movement from the 1960s on, which is still going very strong. I spoke about creation science when I was last invited to the AEI meetings in 07, and so you can you don't have to buy my book. You can also uh, hear about this uh, on the um, very excellent uh, videotapes that the uh, RDF prepares from these meetings. But the, the thing I want you to keep in mind for our purposes today, creation science, as well as intelligent design, are based upon a specific um, Christian doctrine called special creationism, which is an idea not just about God creating, but how God creates. The most important component of special creationism is that God creates everything in its present form. And that's true of galaxies, that's true of the planetary system, that's true of plants and animals on Earth today, human beings. A barnacle is a barnacle, a, an ape is an ape, a pine tree is a pine tree, and um, they were all created as separately created kinds with limited genetic variability. Um, so you can have evolution within the kind, but you can't have evolution from one kind to another. And the most uh, common form of special creationism is that this creation event took place at one time, over six 24-hour days. Now, I, I say it's usually uh, because there are other forms of special creationism, uh, something called progressive creationism, for example, which basically is what most of the intelligent design people are embracing which takes the idea that God does specially create things, but he creates them sequentially through time. So from the intelligent design perspective, God specially created the motor of the bacteria flagellum. That was a special creation. Now maybe other parts of the bacteria might be able to involve, you know, evolve, but that's just evolution within the bacterial kind, right? Uh, bacteria don't evolve into giraffes, right? That's the general idea. The most important thing about special creationism is the creation of things in their present form. And that is a theme that we'll see running through uh, all the kinds of creationism. Now, the creation science movement continues to, oops, hello, go back again. 
continues to be a very large and very successful movement. Uh, by no means has uh, the creation science movement um, declined at all over the last uh, 15 or 20 years since the ascendancy of intelligent design. Um, there are probably, with the advent of the internet, more sources of creation science now than there were 15 or 20 years ago. These are the folks who brought you flood geology. Uh, the idea that all sedimentary deposits all over the planet were the result of Noah's flood. And, for example, Grand Canyon was cut catastrophically when a huge amount of water burst through. You can see the lake there in the uh, Colorado Plateau. A huge amount of water burst through and cut Grand Canyon catastrophically, much as Glacial Lake Missoula created the uh, channel scablands up in Montana. There, you know, there are examples of catastrophic geology, certainly. This is not one of them. <laughs> If you want to know more about the Grand Canyon, of course, uh, you can go with NCSE to, uh, on a raft trip down Grand Canyon. We do that every summer. I will tell you the creationist side of the um, uh, story, and my colleague Alan Gishlick, who is a PhD geologist, will tell you the evolution side, and of course you can make up your own mind. So <laughs> see the canyon with Scott and Gish, sort of. If you read the creation science literature, you will find that they promote what they call the two-model approach. There's only two possibilities, either evolution or special creation. So therefore, if you disprove evolution, creationism wins by default. Remember this diagram. You're going to see it again. Because this is a basic uh, thread that runs through the creationist movement, past and present and doubtless future. Now, I mentioned when I started this talk that um, a very important legal decision Edwards versus Aguilar sort of changed the landscape a bit. Now let me go back to that. The Edwards decision um, and a dissent by Justice Scalia pretty much shaped the current situation that we have in the creation and evolution controversy today. Justice Brennan wrote that it was legal to teach scientific alternatives to evolution, one of which was proposed abrupt appearance theory, which for euphemisms is just one of my very favorites all time for, for creationism. Uh, I, I think it's actually going to come back. I, I think maybe abrupt appearance theory has, has a future in the post-intelligent design world. And of course, intelligent design theory was specifically um, uh, named, as it were, in order to be a scientific alternative to evolution. Of course, creation science was the original scientific uh, alternative to evolution. Justice Scalia had a dissent in which he mentioned that it was perfectly reasonable for teachers to teach the evidence against evolution. And I'll come back to that in more detail. But very briefly, what do we mean by intelligent design? Well, intelligent design is a fairly broad movement with a very narrow scientific base. Um, some have compared it to a theocratic movement. Uh, their goal, quite honestly, is to replace the materialism in American society with a quote, proper Christian theism. And they do this by attacking the material basis of science, the fact that we do science by explaining nature through reference to natural causes rather than through reference to supernatural causes. That methodological naturalism is a very normal way that science has been done for over 100 years, perhaps even longer. By attacking the material base of science, they believe that they can attack the material materialistic, uh, philosophically materialistic orientation of, of the society. Now, how do you attack science? Well, cell division is certainly a very uh, materialistic explanation. The theories involved in how cells divide is, is natural causes, but nobody's going to get excited if you stand on the corner and say, scientists are lying to you about cell division. Instead, they attack evolution because evolution within science is the most sensitive, shall we say, uh, topic. And it is one that many people have reservations about anyway. So attacking science, excuse me, attacking evolution is a way of attacking the materialist basis of science, which is a way of attacking the materialist uh, orientation of American society. That, in a nutshell, is intelligent design. They do this by claiming that there is evidence against evolution. Where have we heard that before? 